Hello and welcome. This is Culturally Responsive Teaching Strategies for ELLs. My name is Allison Berrios de Gacharna and I work for the Department of Multicultural Education. This PD has been created in collaboration with our district partners, Elementary Literacy and Social Emotional Learning, African, African American, Latino, and Gender Studies and Social Studies, Multicultural Mayan and Haitian Social Services Support, and Department of Research Evaluation and State Assessment. Please follow us on Twitter at ESOLPBC. Let's begin. This training has been aligned to our district strategic plan. We will be focusing on the effective and relevant instruction to meet the needs of all students, specifically our English language learners. Let's begin with a welcoming ritual. Take a moment to reflect on the connections you have had with your EOL students. Some of the experiences we have had are similar to and some are different from the experiences of our ELLs. The purpose of this activity is to provide an opportunity to reflect on the connections we have had with our students and try to understand their experiences. Now open a new browser page and type flipgrid.com. It will ask you for the flip code. Please type 9118747. Once you get there, we want you to pick one stem and record your response. Here are some examples of stems you can choose from. I will show you an example. Once you come to the Flipgrid code 9118747, you will see the I Saw Myself activity. Let's listen to an example. Hello, an experience that I had in common with Isabella, one of my former fourth graders, is that I um, came to this country to visit, but I wanted to stay and pursue an education and graduate from college and uh, go to the university and become a teacher, like I did. By the way, we will be going through other Flipgrid activities. Please take note of the flip code Hispanic Latino that you can access later on and find all of these activities in one single location. As we're planning for instruction, we must keep in mind the Palm Beach Focus Model Learning Map. Throughout this presentation, we will be addressing these elements. How do we lead culture, systems, and instruction to empower students to reach their highest potential? As a district, our FY20 goals are to create a welcoming climate while promoting safety, build relationships, and make academic students centered. The climate and behavior have to be in place in order for learning to happen. These are essential principles in building a strong foundation for a culturally responsive classroom environment. Our content objectives for this session are participants can understand who are English language learners, linguistically diverse students, and their experiences. Participants can understand what does culturally responsive teaching for ELs look like, and participants can understand how to be culturally responsive in their instructional practice. Our language objective is the following. Participants can orally discuss the key features of culturally responsive teaching practices. Here's our agenda for this training. Please 
Note that you can access the handouts at that address, bit.ly slash 3CDTWV7, or you can scan the QR code. There are a lot of misconceptions about what culturally responsive teaching is. Most often, people think about it as an engagement strategy. In reality, culturally responsive teaching is a multifaceted approach to supporting students in increasing their brain power and learning muscles in order to take on more rigorous content. It's an integrated approach that connects the dots between relationships, social emotional learning, academic mindset, and rigorous instruction that builds student competence over time so students are able to accelerate their learning. These are some research-based books and websites we will be referencing throughout this presentation. There are a wide range of research that refer to being culturally responsive, but these books in particular take into account the linguistic responsive teaching strategies for ELLs. These images can be linked to the author's blogs or websites for your future reference, and they are included in the handouts provided for you as well. So here is the District of Palm Beach County's breakdown of ELLs. Please note that 18% of our students are English language learners. A student ethnic origin and race comes from what the parent or guardian fills out in the student registration. The Department of Education race and ethnicity definitions are as follows. American Indian or Alaska Native is a person who has origins in any of the original peoples of North and South America, including Central America, and who maintain tribal affiliations or community attachments. Asian is a person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, or the Indian subcontinent. Black or African American is a person having origins in any of the black racial groups in Africa. Hispanic or Latino, a person of Cuban, Mexican, Puerto Rican, South or Central America or other Spanish culture or origin regardless of race. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa or other Pacific Islands. White, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East or North Africa. Two or more races. Students who select more than one racial category but do not indicate that they are Hispanic or Latino. Please keep in mind, our students are more than a label on a form. They come from a variety of backgrounds and experiences. A culturally responsive educator understands that in order to meet the needs of our cultural and linguistic diverse students, it's important to recognize and honor their culture and language. Culture is a way of thinking, being, and interacting with the world. Throughout this presentation, we will be providing the cultural connection in an orange box. A great activity to do with your students is a poll using Kahoot. You can ask your students whether they identify themselves as Latino or Latina, Hispanic or Latinx. You can have conversations with them over which names they prefer to describe their ethnicity. A good idea is to play a video describing these terms with your students. The Office of African, African American, Latino, Holocaust, and Gender Studies has created a wonderful video 
we have reference for you in our digital resources handout. Please check it out. This ESSA Elementary ELL subgroup data is a reflection of the opportunity gap some of our ELLs have experienced. 43% of the overall ELL subgroup of the students district-wide grades 3 to 5 have met proficiency on the 2019 ELA FSA. As you can see, the Asian, multi-ethnic, and white ELL subgroups exceeded the overall ELL proficiency. On the other hand, the Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, American Indian or Alaskan Native, and Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islanders score lower than the overall ELL subgroup. Likewise, we can see the information for the FSA in math. As we're uncovering culturally responsive teaching strategies, we need to make sure that we're taking into account the racial and cultural diversity within the ELL subgroup. Here's the information also coming from middle school. And also, we find information for high school. One of the first steps towards becoming culturally responsive is to understand culture. Understanding culture is the foundation for constructing and maintaining a culture of care. This is a graphic to represent the cultural proficiency continuum. This continuum represents a wide range of values, behaviors, and attitudes of an individual or organization reflecting their response to diversity. In order to support our ELLs, we need to acknowledge any biases we may have. This requires each of us to self-reflect. Then we need to develop our cultural intelligence. This can be accomplished by learning about the culture of our students and identifying possible scenarios where cultural clashes might occur. We can also be aware of how microaggressions, which primarily happen in the first four stages of the continuum, impact our diverse learners. As your cultural intelligence and cultural sensitivity increases, you will move towards cultural proficiency at the top of the continuum, which is the ideal stage for educators and teachers of ELLs. Culturally proficient individuals do the following. They assess culture, value diversity, manage the dynamics of difference, adapt to diversity and institutionalize cultural knowledge by driving the changes in the system to establish the new status quo. Let's take a closer look at cultural pre-competence versus cultural competence stages. In the pre-competence stage, as an individual, you might see the difference, but you respond to it inadequately. You might limit your beliefs to possible stereotypes about a person's or group's cultural practice. This is what it might sound like in a school. Now let's look at the next stage, the cultural competence. As an individual, you see the difference, understand the difference that difference makes. You are accepting and respecting the differences. This is what it might sound like in a school. As we continue to move towards cultural proficiency, it's important to seek out and celebrate diversity as we honor our students for the totality of who they are and the impact and importance of their culture and language. This is what it will sound like. SORTAS is a go-to strategy. 
This is one of the 78 research-based strategies designed to be used as a resource by K-12 general education, ESOL, and content area teachers with English language learners in their classrooms. The majority of the strategies are content neutral and can be used in a variety of teaching environments. Each strategy is listed with a purpose, grouping format, levels of English language proficiency, the teacher action, as well as the student actions. CarSource are culturally responsive because they provide students with the opportunity to interact with academic vocabulary collaboratively. It's also a game-like activity, and games can be culturally responsive because they get the brain's attention and require active processing when learning. Closed Sort Task is a vocabulary teaching strategy appropriate for ELLs, access levels 2 through 5, that isolates list of critical target vocabulary that can be compared and contrasted. Students work with a learning partner to sort the vocabulary into two or more categories. This research shows the different layers of culture. The surface culture, the shallow culture, and the deep culture. Take a moment and see the different characteristics of culture for each layer. Like an iceberg, nine tenths of culture is below the surface. You can bring this cultural iceberg activity live using Jamboard. This card sword activity can be done while the teacher leads it in a Google Meet, or you can assign a copy to each of your students through Google Classroom. Culture Crossing Guide is the website educators can use to learn more about cross-cultural etiquette and understanding. It can be found on the ESOL Elementary Blender page under ESOL Resources. The top 10 countries where our Palm Beach County School District students are born are United States of America, Haiti, Guatemala, Brazil, Cuba, Honduras, Colombia, Venezuela, Jamaica, and Mexico. Here's a great way to find out more about different Hispanic Latino countries. Ask students to state five facts about a Hispanic Latino country they're interested on and have them use the Cultural Crossing Guide website to include cultural facts as well. Please take a look at the Flipgrid activity by including the flip code shown in this presentation. Understanding culture will have a positive impact on the way your students learn, cope, solve problems, and communicate. Let's read this quote. Viewing the child through this cultural context provides an understanding of the child and the factors that influence behaviors. According to Soretta Hammond, while you're building your understanding of the other components of culturally responsive teaching, one of the ways you can get to know your ELLs is to start establishing an authentic human connection with your students built on personal warmth. Students like to share more about who they are. How about making time to know your ELLs using the Flipgrid activity? Students will share two true statements and one lie about themselves. Let's take a look at one example. Again, we're back to the Flipgrid activity, and now we're going to look at the code 44DCA6DB. Remember, these are two truths and a lie. Let's look at these example. Hello, my name is Alison Berrios de Gacharna, and I'm gonna share two facts that are true and one that is a lie about myself. Ready? One, 
I have a 19 year old son who's studying vocal performance. Two, I am from Dominican Republic. Three, I am married to a Colombian. Did you find out which one is a lie? Here is one example of a handout teachers can use to get to know their ELLs. This document provides questions about what do I need to know about my EL, which we refer to ELL in Florida. For example, some of the information that will be relevant for teachers to know includes, can the students read and write in their home language? What are the Access English Language Proficiency scores in the four domains? Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. What do we know about the educational experiences of my students? Family background? Student interest? Student plans and or goals? Some ways you can obtain information about your students' families, interests, and experiences is just by listening to their responses during your cell morning meeting or experiences that are similar to a read aloud or lesson being taught. Here's another handout, creating a welcoming environment for ELLs. Here are 10 ways to create a positive, identity-affirming, welcoming environment for all students, not just ELLs. Comes from a blog called EmpoweringELLs.com. When educators and people describe varying characteristics of culturally responsive teaching, unlocking English learners' potential has attempted to synthesize these ideas into four overarching guidelines. These guidelines overlap with one another. Guidelines outlined in the book are as follows. Guideline one is culturally responsive teaching is asset base. Guideline two, culturally responsive teaching places students at the center of learning. Guideline three, Culturally responsive teaching values students, languages, cultures, and backgrounds. Guideline four, culturally responsive teaching simultaneously challenges and supports students. We will take a look at just two of these guidelines in depth throughout this presentation. Guideline one, culturally responsive teaching is asset space. As we consider the obstacles that ELLs might overcome in order to acquire a new language, while at the same time learning the content, it can be easy to approach our work with a deficit perspective. The deficit perspective will focus on the ELLs challenges and view their home languages and cultures as a hindrance to overcome. Whereas an asset-based perspective is one that values students' home languages and cultures and sees them as a foundation for future learning. A culturally responsive educator understands an asset-based perspective requires us to approach the work we do with ELLs with respect and empathy. This will grow when we try to put ourselves in the shoes of their students and families. An asset-based perspective recognizes that parents of ELLs are involved in their children's education and support their children in very and perhaps unrecognized ways. This perspective also provides opportunity to honor students' cultural and linguistic backgrounds and incorporate what they already know into their teaching. Here's a Jamboard activity you can use with the families at your school. Families can interact with you while deciding together which statements are examples of asset-based perspective or deficit-based perspective. 
Let me show you how to interact with this activity. We have made a copy of this activity for you. The purpose of this activity is to read the scenario and then go to the next frame to do the Jamboard activity. Notice that the directions are to read the sentences and then decide if it's either asset-based perspective or deficit-based perspective. So you can move the sticky notes to the correct column. This is a great way to interact with this information. And again, you can do this with your students or you can do this also with the families in either a PTA meeting or any community involvement activity that you might do at your school. The WIDA Candle philosophy and guiding principles of language development goes along with having an asset space perspective. The Candle philosophy is based on the belief that all students bring to their learning cultural and linguistic practices, skills, and ways of knowing from their homes and communities. WIDA believes that as educators, our role is to craft instruction that capitalizes on and builds upon these assets. Using the Candle descriptors, key uses allows teachers to plan instruction for ELLs that builds upon what they can do according to their English language proficiency levels in each domain of listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Teachers can access these resources from the WIDA website listed on the side. Two of the ways you can have an asset space perspective and create a welcoming environment is to pronounce students' name correctly. In many cultures, it is a significant task to name a child, which might include ceremonies and rituals. If we want to honor them and their culture, we need to practice and insist on pronouncing it correctly. One way you can do this is by recording students pronouncing their own names and you can replay it to practice. Oftentimes, if an ENL's name is hard to pronounce, teachers will assign an English name. Some may start with the same letter of their passport name, but sometimes they don't even share the same letter sound. We do not want to force ELLs to drop their official names for an English one. However, if they come to class with a nickname that they prefer to use, then it's appropriate to call them by it. Many students have meaningful backstories for the nicknames they have chosen. Let's read about some classroom best practices. A teacher is aware of students' interests and challenges outside the classroom by getting to know the student. Put support into place to help students overcome obstacles that may get in the way of learning. For example, snacks for students who may not have had breakfast, system for catching up on missed work, and written agendas for EOLs to follow extra time to complete homework if the student is responsible for caregiving responsibilities of younger siblings or elderly relatives. Use multiple means of communicating with the OL families, like translated notes or telephone calls and the use of a CLF. Now, for purposes of this presentation, let's now go into depth of the guideline number three, culturally responsive teaching values, student languages, cultures, and backgrounds. As you're planning your lessons, it's essential to find a variety of ways to incorporate the EOL's home language, culture, and experiences into the lessons. Text selection is critical for allowing students to see themselves and share their culture and experiences that they may be similar or different than the other students. Even allowing them to read books in their home language is beneficial to developing their literacy and validating their culture and linguistic background. In our lessons, we want to include multicultural materials and resources. 
These links provide resources on building a more diverse and inclusive classroom library. Include perspective of individuals that come from ELL's home cultures and incorporate cultural, historic, and linguistic information about the target culture into instruction. These culturally responsive teaching practices go above just celebrating the diversity among students because they are focused on using culture as a cognitive scaffold for processing new content during learning. A teacher read aloud strategy helps students develop and improve literacy skills such as reading, writing, speaking, and listening. What makes it culturally responsive is that teachers read aloud and that has the same result as storytelling for students in their communities. Listening to an adult read an engaging story reminds students of having listened to a care provider at home tell a story to them. Teacher read aloud strategy is a reading strategy found on page 60 that is appropriate for all English language uh, proficiency levels and this reading strategy provides a model of proficiency in reading and a means to provide content for ELLs who cannot read at the level of the text. Listening to the teacher tell the story stimulates growth and understanding of vocabulary and language patterns. English language learners and non-proficient readers need plenty of time to experience receptive language, which is the listening, while they become more confident with expressive language, the speaking and reading out loud. The teacher typically provides background information about the text and activates what the student already knows about the topic. Teachers should try to make connections between the students, their cultures, and the text when possible. This strategy of reading out loud addresses the listening and speaking language domains. Now, let's look at this short video about the importance of selecting books that represent students in your classroom. When you are done watching this video, we will come back here. This made Grace sad for two reasons. She didn't like Natalie, and she didn't have a daddy of her own. Grace felt less and less like being the pink and floaty kind of princess. She couldn't imagine it. I think windows and mirrors is a nice metaphor to explain the importance of students seeing themselves in text and then students learning about others through text. Don't touch your nose if your dad doesn't live with you. Yeah, me too. Text selection is really important and I think when students can see just even the slightest connection, they're so excited. Reach Academy has seen an increase in diversity. We're seeing students from all over the world. Many of our families have been impacted by trauma. We need high quality teachers in Title I schools that really believe in our children and their capacity to learn and not just look through a deficit lens. I've known I wanted to be a teacher since I was in second grade. For me, I wanted to be that teacher who looked like my students, who understood the struggle of what it means to be a smart little black girl. When I was little, I loved to read. As I got older, I wanted to see myself reflected in stories because I started to become more aware of my own identity. So our question this morning is, what is your favorite book that we've read this year and why? The Flower's Beautiful Daughter because it made me learn about new cultures. My favorite book is Crown because I can relate to it. Okay, me favorite don't you play it. So many of our families, they feel invisible in this society. They haven't been seen. They haven't had a voice. And how do we ensure when they walk through the doors of Reach Academy that they feel like they are somebody, that they are important?
it's really important that students see themselves in all aspects of their classroom and feel valued and respected. It's also really important to foster this understanding of others so that when they grow up, they're able to work with all different kinds of people. We live in a world now where we have to build alliances across differences. I agree. All right, you are gonna get to create a character today. Um, somebody that you wish was in a story. So what is their hair like? Is it like yours or is it different than yours? When I first came to this school, I didn't have any friends and I'm like, I wanna like make her just like me. Okay, so maybe one of the reasons why I love teaching is watching those aha moments in students. Sometimes it's just watching them get excited about something. It's really heartening to see students who may be judged for so many things be these brilliant little people who are gonna one day run the world. I want this character to exist because I want a character to be like me because I'm smart and brilliant and awesome. Here's an activity to bring the concept of windows and mirrors to your students by asking them to recommend books to the class. Students explain if these books are windows or mirrors to them and why. Let's take a closer look at one example. Coming back to our Flipgrid activities, we have the windows and mirrors. Remember, students think about their favorite book and record a video discussing the following, the title of the book, and whether if this book is a window or a mirror to them and why. And finally, they give the recommendation of this book. Let's take a closer look at this example. Hello, my name is Alison Barrios de Gachana, and I want to recommend this book, Pablo Finds a Treasure. It it's written by Andre Pauline and Isabel Malenfant. I recommend it because it is a window to learn more about children impoverished and to learn about how some children have their homes and landfills and how they have adventures looking around to find a treasure. I hope you like this book. Thank you. Here's interesting data coming from the school district of Palm Beach County. Notice these are the percentages of students by language. The top four languages being spoken in our district are English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Portuguese. That is 38% of our students being bilingual, bicultural. Additionally, we are committed to increasing student achievement by addressing the needs of a diverse student population and providing culturally responsive instruction and curriculum. An educational environment that normalizes the infusion of African, African American, Latino, and gender studies increases students' sense of pride and reinforces positive school culture. It is important that all students are able to see a representation of themselves in the classroom, curriculum, and the community. The Department of Teaching and Learning has aligned this Florida statue to applicable units. You can find the state statue requirements on your grade level elementary literacy blender page under the scope tab. The units of study have been aligned to the statute for social studies, science, ELA modules, units, and ELA content literacy. If teachers are looking for additional materials, they can also reach out to their literacy specialist to find out if a book meets that statute. To sum it up, Students need exposure to great level curriculum and skill instruction, regardless of educational background or English language proficiency level. Students should also be able to see themselves in your curriculum. Please take time to fill out a feedback form for us. We appreciate your time and opinion. This is the link to our feedback form. Again, 
don't forget to access the handouts or scan the QR code to have all of these documents available for you. Let's take a look at a quote by Dr. Kevin Maxwell. Our job is to teach the students we have, not the ones we would like to have, not the ones we used to have, those we have right now, all of them. We have come to an end. Thank you for your commitment to meeting the needs of all of our students. Please take time to follow us on Twitter at EaselPVC. And if you post on Twitter and use one of the culturally responsive teaching strategies learned today, please add the hashtag culturally responsive PVC so others can see how you're implementing the strategies in your classroom. Once again, thank you. My name is Alison Berrios de Gacharna. See you soon. Hasta pronto.